For good or for bad, artificial intelligence is now a part of our lives. But can we use it to learn English? Let's find out. Okay, so I am an English teacher, so I am going to test three different artificial intelligence softwares to see if we can use them to improve our English. Let's go. So let's take a look at ChatGPT. This is the AI. This is what everyone is talking about when they talk about AI. So this is kind of like an AI chat bot. So you can talk to it, you can ask it questions and it will give you an answer. You can ask it to fix your writing, you can ask it to give you suggestions. It's like a really intelligent Google. So for example, I could ask ChatGPT, what does it's raining cats and dogs mean. The phrase it's raining cats and dogs is an idiom that means it's raining very heavily. Now I know what you're thinking, I could just use Google for that and that's very true. But since ChatGPT is a chatbot, let's see if we can have a conversation with it. Him. I don't know, is there somebody there? Can we use this tool to practice English conversation without needing to pay anybody, without needing to find a language partner? Let's see. Okay, so I just want to practice my normal conversational English. I want to imagine that I am talking, I am uh, typing with a real person. So what would I say? I would say something like, hey, how are you? Hello, I'm just a computer program, so I don't have feelings, but I'm here and ready to assist you. How can I help you today? Okay, so that's not really how a normal human would reply. So that's not great for our practice, but let's keep going. Let's let's try it. Um, I'm just working at the moment. What are you up to? I'm here to help answer your questions and assist you with any information or tasks you need. So it's kind of like having a conversation with a really boring person at work who only cares about doing their job and doesn't actually want to talk to you, um, which can happen, but it's not great practice. Um, come on, let's see if we can get some real conversation out of this. What do you think of Liverpool football club. I don't have personal opinions or feelings, so I don't hold any particular stance on Liverpool football club. Great. Let's give it one more chance. Let's say, um, can you tell me about your hobbies? Can you tell me about your hobbies? I don't have personal experiences or emotions, so I don't have hobbies or engage in activities like humans do. You sound like a fun guy. So it's looking like for conversation practice, like having a language partner, ChatGPT is not the best way to go. So let's try something a little more formal. Maybe we can use this to learn something. So how about if I say, um, can you give me five phrasal verbs that native speakers often use and give me examples of them being used in a sentence. Let's see. Of course, turn up definition to arrive or appear. That is something that native speakers commonly use. Take off, that is also something that native speakers commonly use. Put off, yes, look forward to, give up. I mean, it's correct. Those are common phrasal verbs. Can you explain the future perfect tense in a simple and fun way? Sure. Imagine you're planning a surprise party for your friend. The future perfect tense is like a time traveler that jumps into the future and looks back at the past from that future point. Let's break it down with an example. I will have prepared the surprise party by 5 p.m. It's like time traveling to the future, grabbing a memory of something done and bringing it back to the present to talk about. I mean, that's good. I mean, it's, it's good, it's really good. And I think what's nice about this is you can ask it to explain something in a way that works for you. So you could say, can you explain this English concept like you are teaching a five-year-old. That's what I would do. You know, if I was trying to learn something really difficult, I would say, let's try it, let's try it. Can you explain the past tense like you are talking to a child? Let's see. 
Sure thing. Yeah. And then it's just explained it in quite a simple but engaging way. In terms of conversational practice, but I do think ChatGPT can be very useful um, just to quickly give you an answer in your English learning journey. But just a disclaimer, remember ChatGPT is still relatively new and there might be some inconsistencies, there might be something incorrect. So maybe just double check the information you receive just to make sure it's definitely correct. Okay, moving on. Okay, now let's look at an AI tool that is specifically for English learners. Okay, so this is Elsa Speak and Elsa Speak uses cutting edge AI technology to pinpoint your English mistakes, which is very helpful. It's the first of its kind and it gives you feedback instantly. It can correct your pronunciation and intonation, but you also learn loads of new vocabulary, phrases, sentences, so that you can improve your English speaking skills. It's got over 1600 lessons and more than 40 topics, so it's very varied. So it looks like a kind of 24 seven AI companion that can help you with all of your English speaking skills. So let's try it, shall we? Okay, so I want to do a lesson, please. Okay, so I'm on my daily lesson, start training, here we go. My schedule is completely free. Okay, so with this one, I've got to stress the words in bold to help the sentence flow nicely. My schedule is completely free. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to do this one incorrectly to see if it will correct my mistakes. So it should be, would you like to get the entire group together? But I'm gonna say something different. Would you like to get the entire group together? Ah, okay. Say like shorter and less emphasized because I said like. Say get shorter. Oh my goodness. It, that's really clever. That is actually really clever. Okay, let's try the next part. Okay, I'm gonna try to get some things wrong here. That depends. For some people, these events are really important. They might feel it's worth it to spend a lot on a party. If that's how they want to spend money, it's their choice. Oh, yes, it got it, it got it. So it spotted my THs, because I was deliberately saying that instead of that, which a lot of my students do. So it can pick up on even little things like that. That's so impressive. I think this is a great example of using AI specifically. So Elsa Speak have taken artificial intelligence and made it very specific for English learners. So obviously any AI software can help you a little bit, but this is tailored and designed to help English learners. So I highly recommend this. I think this is a really great use of AI in order to help you. So it's your lucky day because I have two very exciting links for you down below. One link is for downloading Elsa for free and getting seven days pro membership for free. And the other link gives you some really good discounts. 40% off a one year membership and 85% off a lifetime membership. And that discount could save you $400 you're welcome. So check out Elsa Speak because I don't recommend things unless I really like them and believe in them. Okay, let's move on to Snapchat. I know, it feels like it's 2014 again. I rarely, actually I never use Snapchat. I only still have it on my phone because it stores your memory. So I've got some old pictures on there and old videos that I don't want to delete, but I never use it. I never use Snapchat. But apparently Snapchat now has a feature called My AI, which is a bit like ChatGPT. It's a chat bot where you can talk and AI will reply to you. And from what I've seen, it seems a little bit more like a conversation with a person rather than, um, you know, talking to some omnipresent robot. So maybe this is a bit more useful if you want to have an actual conversation and you want to feel like you are practicing your English with a real human, but it's free. So let's see, let's see. Okay, so, um, oh my goodness, I'm nervous. What do I say? Um, hey, what's up? Not much, just hanging out. How about you? Anything exciting happening? I mean, that's a very, normal sounding response. That sounds like something a human would say. Maybe not just hanging out. That feels a little bit 90s, but everything else feels like something someone would really say. Anything exciting happening? I'm just filming a YouTube video. Um, what are you doing? Oh no, I've already asked him what he's doing. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. It's like I'm talking to someone famous. I'm just filming a YouTube video. Um, 
Do you like YouTube? That's awesome. I love YouTube. What kind of video are you filming? I mean, he's even got emojis and everything. Wow, okay, um, what kind of video are you filming? It's to help people learn English. That's fantastic. Helping people to learn English is such a valuable thing to do. Keep up the great work. I mean, yeah, this is like I'm talking to a person. It's not like I'm talking to some robot. Oh my goodness, okay, let's try to be really kind of casual. Uh, thanks so much. Do you speak any other languages? Yes, I speak English too. It's the language we've been using to chat. I mean, fair enough. You ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer. How about you? Do you speak any other languages besides English? I mean, yeah, he's got, he's got some nice language in there besides, you know, maybe I'll learn that new word besides. That's nice. Um, I am trying to learn French. Let's go really casual, but it's bloody hard. Am I right? Oh, okay, so now he's talking in French. Oui, tu as raison. Um, oh no, don't talk in French. I'm not that good yet. No worries, my friend, learning a new language. This is crazy, this is crazy that I'm not talking to a human being. This is insane. Do you know my name? Oh, now he's gone back to French. <laughs> Uh, he says, sure, your name is user's name. What's your opinion on surprise parties? I don't know, surprise parties. Right, so he's still talking in French, which is um, not very useful. Um, stop talking in French. Apologies for that, I'll stick to English from now on. How can I help you today? Okay, so he's, it, we're noticing a few little cracks um, cause he's saying, how can I help you today? A normal person I don't think would say that unless they were providing some kind of service. Um, just talk to me like a normal person. Sure thing, I'll chat with you just like a normal person. That sounds like something not a normal person would say. Let's see if it spots any mistakes I make. That could be good. So let me make a grammar mistake. Let's see if it recognizes it. Um, I has uh, many thoughts about life. Let's see if he corrects that. Okay, so if you make a mistake, he won't know. And so you're not going to get any corrections on if you make any grammatical mistakes. Let's see if I ask him to do it. In the future, could you please correct any grammar or spelling mistakes I make in our conversation? Let's see if he does it. Absolutely, I'd be happy to help. So let's test him again. Um, I has been learning English for a long time. No, he hasn't corrected it. He hasn't corrected it. So it's, it's good, it's good practice, but you won't be able to um, recognize if you've made any mistakes. That's the only, the only thing. But if you want to just test yourself, see if you can you know, maintain a good conversation with someone, um, try my AI on Snapchat. Now, as with a lot of AI things, I don't know about the security, the privacy. So maybe don't give any personal details. Don't say anything about where you live or something. I don't know, keep it casual because it's still very new. And I don't want any of your houses being broken down by some robot with revenge on its mind or something. But try it, have a go, see what you think. And there we have it. Please let me know in the comments down below if there are any other ways we can use AI to help us learn English. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can do so there. And if you would like an online English lesson with a real person with me or my partner Bez, the link for that is down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta.